the fated day, the 24th of February, when classroom lessons were suspended, a date that will always mark a watershed moment in our lives and as is the case in our school. The first hurdle was a bubble, a psychological one for both myself and the lecturers, even more than for the students themselves. How could a school based on practical lessons and teamwork as much as ours suddenly be conducted remotely? And how could we all suddenly reinvent ourselves as remote lecturers, juggling issues with internet connections, completely different teaching instruments, syllabuses that needed to be adapted as we went along in order to salvage the rest of the academic year. On the other side were the students. They seemed lost, isolated and uncertain, caught in a sudden lockdown that was both physical and psychological, looking and waiting for answers which we as a school were not able to give them. At this point, we all had the same gut instinct to react right away to adopt solutions, even if they would prove to be imperfect and in need of fine tuning. Some of the solutions were frustrating, others encouraging. Either way, we needed to do everything possible to save what we could, maintaining as much professional skill and credibility as we could for our students. The first year students, that had just started the course a few months before and were keen to start experimenting to really become part of the school community. The second year students with their expectations and enthusiasm, keen to put everything they had learned into practice. And last but not least, the third year students who were ready to graduate with their final film project. It was an experience we all shared here, so there is no point in insisting over all the hurdles and complaints we had to tackle, although, although some would be quite legitimate, really. Anyway, I thought it'd be interesting and emblematic to present here the case of the creation documentary entitled Pictures from a Quarantine. The idea came about because the third year students, first and foremost, the director, had been involved in a documentary on unaccompanied minors, but were forced to give up just before the first week of shooting at the end of February. At that point, we had an idea to try to reveal what was happening in our, stu in our students' homes. To start with, as you can imagine, the students were taken aback. They were reluctant and nonplussed at the idea of using the rather unprofessional equipment they had at home. They were worried they would make something amateurish, not up to the expectations one would have of a final project. The end goal they had been working towards for so long after three tough years on the course. But this is where the skill of our lecturers came into play. The direction, production, shooting and sound tutors, I've left out the editing tutor for the time being because he himself will be giving a very short presentation after mine. They needed to convince our students that this situation was actually unique, that we had to work together to harness all the energy, creativity, and inventiveness needed to get around the obstacles we were facing, which in a way is the very same challenge we always come up against in our work as authors, directors, and creators. At this point, a highly unusual teaching approach came into play. It was altogether different from the usual process, whereby after the development stage, the tutors are only around during shooting. Instead, we all work together, piecing a project together one bit at a time, 
based on the daily lives of our students, on their relationships with their parents and the people they share their time and space with, with the people they talk to through their smartphones or computers every day. This also made it possible to use the camera in a way that triggered dramaturgically powerful situations, whether or not actually staged, the scenes were improvisations, which were to some extent induced. At least that was the idea. A couple of times a week, the direction tutor and the students all met up on Teams to discuss the footage the students were uploading onto one drive each day. When the time came around to start watching the pre-edited clips, we used other platforms such frame IO. The meetings were stimulating for all the departments. We were attempting to make a collective film which allowed each of us to break out of the boundaries of our roles, be it director, producer, camera operator, or sound engineer, and have a go at being the author of our daily lives at a milestone moment which affected, and unfortunately will continue to affect, our lives and imagery. For this reason, above and beyond the purely educational experience, we thought it was important to record what we were going through in such a disruptive event. At the same time, the filming and sound tutors were constantly in touch with the students to talk things over and try to sort out issues that arose from the use of non-professional equipment. Needless to say, there were times when people felt defeated, when misunderstandings arose between tutors and students. But isn't that what happens anyway in normal life between different generations and between different departments on official sets? In the end, I feel I can say I'm satisfied with the end result. It's been an alternative experience in terms of development, language, production, and filmmaking. But above all, it's been a landmark, a landmark life experience, as indeed cinema itself is and always will be. Now, Danilo Torre, our lecturer and editing tutor for this project, is going to outline briefly the editing process. Thank you all. I'm here for possible answers on any issues. Thank you again. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Danilo. I'm the teacher uh, of uh, this project of... Uh, sorry, I have a problem with my... Computer. Hello. Uh, can you see my 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 presentation? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm Danilo. I'm the edition department tutor for this movie. I try to explain uh, the occasional uh, workflow for this movie. Usually we try to educate to an orthodox workflow, but as you know, in the edition department, uh, we try to resolve uh, any kind of problem. Today, I omit the, the, some human or budget problem and I try to be very quick. Uh, sorry, I forgot an important point. I never met the student before uh, the lockdown. I, I, I don't know the student. At first, I tried to earn credibility because I said uh, we had to forget uh, traditional workflow and they have uh, some problem. Uh, the first problem during lockdown was uh, the file sharing uh, because uh, any student uh, have a problem. Uh, five source camera, two editors, two producer, one director, and four teacher uh, spread in the north uh, with a uh, low connection sometimes. 
and uh, we had a different provider for uh, internet connection and uh, students usually use a uh, hotspot with smartphone uh, with more limitation uh, and uh, we decided to edit in offline mode is not normal when you shoot a, a documentary uh, for us every day each student uh, made several uh, video proxy files to send with different file share, uh, file sharing platform uh, as only free platform uh, we can use uh, we cannot use a single platform because everyone has problem and uh, we use uh, google drive my bridge will file transfer we transfer and for about three weeks, uh, students uh, uh, send file to the student uh, for editing student. And the editor download dailies and made the lineup footage and uh, every day they can share with everybody by Google Drive uh, uh, basic, it's cheaper. Uh, and everyone can see the footage uh, every day and after we start a uh, discussion about uh, this at the end we had 80 hours of uh, footage and we have two editor and we decide to split the footage by characters and editor each story in different timeline uh, when we were satisfied about uh, the, the rough cut uh, uh, each uh, character, uh, we try to uh, make a global uh, a rough cut, but uh, uh, we had another problem because we have uh, two editors, uh, one, uh, two different editors, and we need to uh, share the rough cut with another platform as free only for two months as a frame.io is a platform where you can comment the rough cut uh, uh, without uh, waste time writing time code or using ambiguous indication because uh, sometimes it's very difficult to because the first rough cut is three hours uh, after two months, we had a really rough cut and the lockdown was ending and the student uh, uh, come back in Milan and we planned a, a screening after uh, during the screening I met for the first time the students in person and but uh, at, at that point uh, we collect uh, the, the, the production department collect uh, the their drive and after we start uh, the post production as usual and may I, the student uh, was uh, very reactive uh, uh, they did uh, their job uh, very well and we are very very happy for the result Thank you very much and goodbye. I stopped the, the, the connection. Thank you. Uh, if you think we, we still have three minutes, we can show a video message from the director himself. Is it okay? Can we? Yes, that's absolutely fine. We have some time. That's fine. Okay. Thanks a lot. We're not seeing the share screen yet. We're sharing, just a minute. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Filippo Romanengo and I'm a graduating student of the Civica Scuola di Cinema Lucchino Visconti in Milan. This year uh, I should have made, uh, together with my companions, an observation documentary when the health emergency due to COVID-19 forced us to change radically our graduation project. 
The proposal that our teachers presented to us consisted in making a documentary that recounted the lockdown experience um, from our point of view. I will be honest in saying that at first the idea frightened a good part of the crew. I myself focused on what seems to me almost insurmountable difficulties uh, tackling a project in the condition we were at the time. We were scattered in different cities of northern Italy without equipment and struggling with a situation that had a psychological and emotional impact that should not be underestimated. However, after a few days of reflections, we decided to give it a try. The first factor that I had to realize is that I could not interpret the, f the figure of the director as it is traditionally understood. Uh, we were preparing to, to tell a very different situation, lives that I did not know uh, that took place in context uh, I had never seen uh, through a gaze that was not mine. The style to be adopted uh, in the story was another key, key point on which much debate was held in the first weeks. I wanted to avoid using the typical, typical stylistic features of the network. Uh, I didn't want uh, the subjects interact with the camera and uh, indirectly with the audience. I asked the crew to get involved, position the camera and try to forget about it, playing the role uh, of themselves uh, intent on carrying out their daily lives. In this way it was possible to restore the sensation of the, the, the passage of time uh, and I believe that the contrast between the, 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 the special immobility of the context, uh, our homes, and the evolution of the lives of those who live there uh, is one of the focal points of the, the narrative. I needed to, to understand what their family situation was, where they were spending the quarantine and what relationship they had with the information channels and understand how the presence of the camera in their home environment would have been welcomed. From here began a gradual process of sharing, sharing uh, uh, one's daily life which led us to an ever greater degree of involvement and with it a renewed enthusiasm. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the making of this documentary turned out to be a, a therapeutic experience. It represented a, a way to keep my mind busy and prevent boredom and despondency from uh, overwhelming me. Um, but I think I can say that it turned out to be um, even much more than this, the more we got used to observing the situation in our home, the more we discovered details of our life and our relationships that uh, we had never focused on. Uh, and despite being an intimate and private experience, uh, I, I believe that it, it can actually be a, a food for thought for the audience uh, and an opportunity perhaps to understand something more about themselves and uh, what this unprecedented experience has represented uh, for our lives. Thanks for your attention. That's, that's okay. great. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, just just before we before we move on, obviously, like many of us, we were obviously thrown into this situation, and we had to come up with solutions to to get our students filming to enable them to complete um, their projects and so forth. Would you carry on with these techniques longer term? Did you find this was fruitful and something that you would want to do anyway going forward? Obviously, we're still continuing this way, but in the longer term. To tell the truth, I prefer to uh, to work uh, on spot. Yeah. I mean, it was a great experience. It was um, very uh, stimulating on 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 all different levels. But I think we are film school. Uh, it's better to work all together as a team uh, on a, a real physical set, not virtually. Anyway, it is possible to repeat short experiences like this. Anyway, if we will be forced again, uh, we, can't, we can't say we won't, unfortunately. We have uh, experimented a method which we know it can work. But uh, I'm eager to go back <laughs> to our <laughs> teaching method and working method to tell the truth. 
I agree. Um, if you have any other questions, um, please put them into the chat and we'll come back at the end when we see if we've got a bit more time. But for now, we'll, we'll move on to our next paper. Um, thank you so much, Aminia and your team. That was that was really great, really interesting. So moving on, our, our next paper is from our colleagues in Belgium. And this is looking at audiovisual thinking for a corona-free location, location shooting. So I'm going to hand over to Mikey, Jessica, Martine and Hilda now. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. All right, all right, great. Greetings to everyone uh, from the Kingdom of Belgium. So we're joining you from CASC. Uh, it's a film program embedded in the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Ghent, Belgium. I'm Jessica Woodworth, the coordinator of the final films of the, the third and final year of the Bachelor uh, program. And I'm here with Mika de Wolf, who is the production coordinator, and Hilde Bayere, the head of the master's program, and uh, Martine Huvan, who's the senior lecturer responsible for international outreach for the film department. So, and there will be Hilda, who is somewhere here, I don't see her, but um, who will be prompting the slides and the video. So here she's uploading, here she is, great. And so. She will be she will be working alongside me, moving the moving the talk forward. So, um, just to give you a bit of context, at Cusk, students follow intensive courses from theory to practice in fiction and documentary and audiovisual research. Uh, the trajectory of every individual student is central. Their training involves intensive one-to-one -one coaching, uh, very lively group discussions, and collaborating regularly with fellow students. So their individual talents are, are nurtured and authenticity, personality, and experimentation are encouraged from the beginning all the way until the end. So we guide them towards carving out their own place in the audiovisual arts. So that's just to give you a little bit of context to sort of kickstart our presentation. We wanted to show an excerpt from one of the Bachelor's uh, films by a director, his name is Servas de Wispolada. Um, and in facing the multiple challenges of filming in COVID times, he found a solution for one of his scenes in dance. Maybe some of you know that the, the Flemish in particular are very, very strong in dance and choreography. Well, here is a tiny glimpse <laughs> of using dance as a solution. And this is a, silly, this is a scene that illustrates um, a love story coming to uh, its tragic end. Uh, and it does so beautifully uh, inside the very strict constraints of uh, Corona protocol that we had to follow. Here you have a minute. Heartbreaking. <laughs> so now we have uh, we have all of your attention. So the bachelor students, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. The bachelor students at Cask in January uh, already had very strong ideas about their final films, but little did we know in January that our playing field was going to change so radically within a few weeks. I asked them on our very first day together in January we didn't know each other at all, to write down spontaneously on a small piece of paper, a scratch of paper, words that they believed were related somehow to their final films. And not sentences, but just words. And I gave them two minutes. 
And what resulted were things like Brotherhood, Sand, Orpheus, Winter, Intolerance, Rain, Men Without Women, Escapism, Butterfly, Survival of the Fittest, Feeding on Shadows, Euphoria, Sunday Mornings, Sky, Burial, and many more. I mention these words because they were the sparks for the fire. At CASP, we believe very deeply in those first sparks, their intuition, those impulses, those words that make us suddenly brighten up or make our thoughts race or make something deep inside of us twist or stir. This is what cinema is really all about, as we all know. And COVID-19 didn't have to be an obstacle at all to exploiting these very first sacred impulses. So we had to turn our lockdown into something positive. And we had to recognize the few gifts that it actually gave us, uh, one of which was time, 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 and a renewed appreciation of freedoms we have all of us always taken for granted. So the first consequences of the pandemic was uh, total disorientation. <laughs> you all know that feeling. Shooting was canceled. Classes were all canceled. All one-to-one -one meetings were canceled. So all of us were reduced, like now, to screens, uh, small faces, too many voices, too many names, very shitty internet connections all the time, exhaustion, and life uh, suspended. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> however, uh, we adapted. We adapted because we had no choice, none of us. Most students struggled with periods of quite serious depression. We have to be honest, and we wanted to share that with you. Every student had to find his her, or, or her own balance, again, physical, emotional, and, and so forth. And in the foggier moments together, we would dig up those very first words. Being forced to constantly circle back to the essence of a project is a great, great fundamental exercise uh, and it's actually we believe the fundament of a very good film so what is the essence of your film what do you really need in order to bring it to life do you really need that wild nightclub scene do you really need that long kiss yeah? do you really need more than five people on your crew the answer to all the questions we were posing was no so the 17 students shot their films in July finally they were able to shoot they edited in August in a bit of a rush, and they screened their films for the jury in September. Um, so we would like to share a few examples that illustrate how the students rose to the occasion and faced the challenge head on. Uh, here's a clip again from, from uh, Servas's film. Um, this is uh, with, with <laughs> from the start, as you all will recognize, what do you do with intimacy on screen? Because the first sort of resounding uh, tip from us all, <laughs> regulation, was no kissing on screen. <laughs> so this is the not kiss scene. So the director, of course, in the beginning was very resistant and he was quite depressed. And, but as we all know, uh, desire and lust can manifest in many different ways. So we had to start from the idea that feet can be very sexy. Yeah, and it's true. But so head to foot provided the distance required to allow them to live out this scene. And aside, which is important to mention, asking actors to be tested presented a financial challenge because in Belgium it cost 50 euro per person to receive a COVID test. Uh, and we're talking here about no budget films. Nobody has any money to make these films. So, however, just before shooting, the two actors finally did take, a, they chose to take a COVID test and the director invested in this. So in fact, they could kiss on screen, but they didn't, they never did. Why, why? The director realized during his rehearsal process that uh, within the constraints of COVID protocol, the, students, uh, uh, the solutions that he found were much, much more powerful than just a kiss. So COVID forced him to dig deeper and to look beyond the obvious solutions. And this is good. This is good for cinema. This is great. So you see here that they, they tangled themselves up. <laughs> and it's a gorgeous scene which conveys everything he needed to convey and adapted to the regulations that we had to follow, which were very strict, and it works beautifully. So we want to uh, move on and share a second anecdote with you. 
this is a film featuring an awkward, uh, provocative, disturbing and entertaining encounter in the night. Uh, a few of its themes are race, fear and hypocrisy. A young white couple and a black brother and sister encounter each other uh, in Brussels late one night. Simon, the director, his biggest struggle that he had with this concept was form. What he was trying to do was to, to, to determine how to keep his frame as non-judgmental as possible with such a delicate uh, de subject matter. And at one point during the long months of lockdown, when he was, you know, in a, big, a bit of a, you can say, emotional paralysis, he was struck by the concept of shooting everything from a distant high angle. And the sound perspective, however, remains embedded among the four characters. So this is a solution involving sound. Sound bridges the physical gap, delivering a very, very engaging experience. Without COVID having hindered his process very seriously, he never would have discovered this ideal solution. So his crew is literally very, very far away from the four protagonists. It's very COVID proof. And so here we wanted to share with you a clip from director Simon van der Zander's film, A Tu Azar. Monsieur, Monsieur, attention, what the last 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 away, Monsieur. What? You risk to tomber. It's a sous Ah, the chaussures? Ah, oui. Ah, ok. Tu n'avais pas vu. C'est comment, mon frère? Oui, ça va. Tu m'as sauvé. Oui, ça va. Il y a un bain fait de ce Euh, je vais faire comme ça. Oui. Ça va? Oui, ça va un peu. Okay. Oui, ça va un peu. Allez, t'as un peu Pour le mariage? Non. Non, on va faire karaoké. Ah, ok. Karaoké. Ah, ok, c'est vrai? Oui, c'est vrai. Cool, cool. Oui. Cool. Ok. Pour ça, vous avez du feu? Euh, euh... Oui, non, j'ai du feu. Ja, ik kom. Ja, je hoeft me ja? niet zo de hele tijd te roepen. Ik ga alvast. Ja, doe maar. Kom. Ja, wacht. Ja, wacht inderdaad gewoon heel eventjes. <laughs> Oké, okay. we'd like to mention also um, a third uh, example of one of our films. It's uh, called Space Boy. It's by director Verle de Wilde. And these are stills that illustrate how our small teams function. It will look familiar to most of you. They were given very strict guidelines by us uh, at CASC. Uh, we had a shooting manual of general safety measures for distancing, hygiene, and testing. And as soon as the lockdown loosened here in Belgium, several professional institutions, of which there are many, started circulating such guidelines for professional sets, which started up. And our task at CASC was to adapt these to the scale and the budget and the logistics of the student films. So we had firm guidelines and a set manual. We had a student corona manager, <laughs> not so exciting, on set, but crucial. And, uh, and one of our staff members, one of our, it was usually Mika, who is here among us, um, who visited all the sets. Uh, uh, day, night, dawn, middle of the night, very brave, to check on things, not to police, but to really give moral support and to see, you know, to make sure that everything was being uh, carefully handled. Because we all know when we're swept away in the passion of creativity, we can forget what a meter and a half means <laughs> pretty quickly. So this, but this worked, it all worked. We had a very strong and healthy and uh, peaceful shoots unfolding and no one got sick. Um, so this is uh, this scene we're sharing with you is uh, where two loving brothers who are doomed to separate quietly share an ordinary moment. So it's um, yeah, it's just an example of the very smooth shoots that we that we witnessed. Um, and we'd like to share uh, a final example uh, from our from our students. These uh, are stills again from a film by director Clara Scholl, and the title is Demons Can't Catch Us, which says a lot. Her, so, her story was set originally in the euphoric, contagious techno music club scene of Brussels, which I can reassure you is very lively, usually, 
but COVID times, of course, means no clubs, no dancing, no concerts, no DJs, no euphoria, forget it. So she had to find another way to capture and convey this energy that she was so committed to. This was really the heart and the core of her film. So she created an open air dance party starring only her three protagonists. And, and uh, miraculously, it works. We were all a little nervous about this, but it's really very contagious and uh, very electrifying. Of course, she's got a great soundtrack uh, uh, going, but nonetheless, she did manage to, to find a solution and um, capture what they are all intoxicated by, which is this techno life and world, fantastic. So, so we, there is one characteristic that most strong film directors share, as we all know, and it's adaptability. I mean, I'm a director as, as well, and nothing ever goes as planned anyway, when you make a film, <laughs> never. So you adapt and you find solutions and you have, no, you have no other choice. So, and when you're lost along the way, it's often very useful and wise to return to the beginning. So that brings us back to those first words, uh, those first sparks of inspiration. And they were very useful for all of us along the way. What did you originally want to tell? You know, this is the gold mine that we had in hand. And I, 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 I dug them up and I had photos of their, their handwritten words. It's very touching and moving to be confronted with those deep into our, our, our pandemic <laughs> reality and to be reminded of what we, they originally wanted to do. And fantastically, they all respected those original impulses sort of unknowingly uh, but there it is there's the gold mine rain escapism sand sunday mornings euphoria there it is those sparks are pure they never lie those are the seeds of ideas and a beacon of light in the darkness and they they helped us along our way they lit our path in a way in a sense <laughs> so our uh, the films of Casper. There you go. There you have them. Look at them. They're all warriors. <laughs> they survived and made really extraordinary films. But the cast films you can you can view online for all of the, those of you who are, are interested in learning uh, more about the, the films that are created here. And we want to thank you. I just wanted to add an aside. It was very moving to w witness the Italians who spoke just before us. Um, we've all been watching or certainly in the first months of the pandemic. We were very, um, yeah, yeah, it's very moving, very, very, very moving, very important to hear these tales. I uh, just wanted to share that. We, we hope we don't all end up in a, a similar darkness, but um, yeah, you came through a very hard period. I think it was harder there than it was here for us in Belgium. So the films are viewable and we are here now. There's Hilda visible and we're, we're actually four of us. So Hilda, who's head of the master's program, Mika, who is our Corona superstar, who visited all the sets in the deep of the night all over Belgium, uh, and Martina, who is the, our head of uh, sound and music, who's deeply engaged in all of those processes and solution seeking, and myself. So if you do have any questions, we would be really very happy to answer them. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Really another engaging presentation. And as you say, just so inspiring what, what we've all achieved. We've all come up with yeah. different solutions against a really difficult time. And I think yeah. we underestimate how heavy a time it's been living our lives against that backdrop and trying to keep going professionally, trying to do the best by our students as well to yeah. keep them inspired. Um, and pastorally, they've needed a lot of support as well. So, and I'm, I'm pleased you, you mentioned that um, as well. And I think it's, it's a great piece of advice that I was given and, and you certainly used in your presentation is about using your limitations to your advantage. So really pushing the students to go back to their original thought process of what am I trying to show here? The kiss that never, never was, you know, that's a really powerful um, example um, of that as well. So, so, um, so I think that, you know, that's really great. Um, I suppose I'm interested in sort of longer term, obviously we're in this situation for however much longer, at least another six months, who knows, hopefully it, it hurries up. Um, which kind of things would you keep going with longer term? You know, some things have worked, worked really well. Um, I suppose it's how we harness students ambition. I know students where, where I was previously teaching wanted to fly all over the world for their, for their film shoots. And suddenly we're like, no, no, you're going to stay domestically. Um, I suppose it's sort of that 
the balance between embracing that ambition and about what's possible and, and being realistic as well. So what your thoughts are on that? I, I don't know if, if, if one of my colleagues would like to, Hilda, yeah, <laughs> Hilda would like to share a word. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, Jessica. That was uh, very nice to. I, I know all the all the ins and the outs, but it's still engaging <laughs> to listen to you. Uh, I just wanted to share that I feel quite um, um, secure with the um, all the uh, measurements and the Corona ma manual and the set manual and the whole procedure that we set in place. So it's quite. Um, uh, it, it gives me a lot of confidence for the for the near future to continue in that way to keep using those protocols. And the students are uh, getting a habit of it and it actually once you get used to the the rules uh, and you're well prepared it's not that difficult um well uh, that's what i wanted to share i uh, in the near future we're definitely going to continue with the the corona protocols and the set manual and the corona managers that uh, surprisingly and that was a big fight for us to, to put up that the the corona managers on set were allowed to be the students uh, it was like a, a thing of confidence that we re really we really have a lot of confidence in our students, but uh, the the higher the umbrella institution the Hohent did not necessarily have. So we I was very happy that we could convince them that uh, our students are actually like trustworthy and could be uh, uh, trusted with uh, um, uh, yeah setting in in motion this all these rules that we asked of them. So this was what I wanted to share. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good point. Um, you know, this new role that, that has, has appeared, the COVID supervisor or, or hygiene manager um, on set. So that's a new role that industry has had to had to look at. And I don't think we've quite defined what that is yet, but we're all working and, and, and making that, that work as well and, and able to keep going with production um, to some degree as well safely. Um, I suppose in terms of if, if this was to go on for another year or two years, and I hope that isn't the case, it's the experience longer term so okay. third year students like in Italy um, Aminia was talking about they'd already had workshops and been um, having those sort of physical um, you know one-to-one -one sessions and, and workshops and so forth um, I suppose it's what does that experience look like longer term um, and, and how we balance that uh, with where we are which I suppose we don't know but um, it's sort of looking at that sort of their journey really um, and what we do and, and while we're not necessarily software teachers, it doesn't matter, we're teaching the craft, the storytelling, the narrative, but there is an element of having that experience of the big shoots and, and, and shooting um, professionally as well. So it's, you know, lots of, lots of things to balance. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you want to come back in and, and say anything there. Sorry, were you addressing me? Or uh, Amini, others? sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we too adopted uh, COVID, uh, COVID protocols, of course, and uh, it, I think we can go on like this. We will be forced to for at least for at least six months, and I think we can manage with that. And we also decided to uh, give our students uh, specific lessons about security on set in uh, COVID times. Uh, so I think w we will manage. I mean. This is not the way we're used to work, but this is what we have to face now. It's the possible, uh, possible best way to, to, to work now. And we'll go on adopting all measures. Uh, we've been exper experimenting these times and it's possible. It is possible. We um, shooted other films uh, once uh, uh, the lockdown was finished for our film essays, for the final essays of the students, and we adopted all the measures uh, we, we had to, and we had good results. Of course, times are longer, um, costs may be higher. This is something official sets, greater sets, have to confront with. Uh, but anyway, we can go on and we'll go on like this. Great. Thank you. And I think, you know, as as um, working in production, as well as our academic roles, we are problem solvers and we we will always find find a way um, to make that happen. Um, and as Jessica said, we found some real kind of examples of creativity and 
finding better ways um, to do certain things creatively as well. So, um, so that, you know, small positives um, to, to take forward. Um, so uh, just checking if there's any other questions in the chat box. So I think we've covered that. We're asking about students to be Corona managers on set. We've, we've talked about Lindsay, that. Can I, can I just uh, put a question forward? Because it was something that was discussed in the, uh, uh, in the morning and I'm interested to, to, to hear to your own experiences because uh, uh, both examples are of team-based work. In the morning, we talked a lot about the, the solo voice, the fact that the students became isolated. In, in both these examples, the, student, the students worked as teams, but in a different environment. You've mentioned the issue of security, which is obviously a, a, an issue in the, in, the current, in the current situation, but I'm, I'm more interested in understanding how you managed to support the students on set. So were the teachers there with them or um, did you somehow came up with other solutions that would allow the students to work in isolation, but as teams uh, all together. Sorry, Are you no? talking to yeah. Okay. Maybe, yeah. To both, to both. <laughs> okay. okay, Jessica, please. Um, maybe I can um, give uh, some uh, comment on, yeah. the, on this yeah. question. Here's the... uh, I th <laughs> so I talk? Yeah. Um, well, I think that the pre-production was uh, very important uh, because during pre-production, um, I read the scripts and I discussed the locations, uh, how they are the locations uh, Corona proof. Uh, we stimulate to uh, shoot uh, outside. Um, and uh, there was the general uh, manual of the school. And this manual, the student adjusted uh, for their uh, shooting, for their crew. Um, also, it was very important that the crew got all information in front so that once they start the shooting, they uh, could cope to all problems uh, regarding uh, Corona. Um, it was also, uh, I went uh, to visit the sets, but of course I could not always be there. Uh, and I also, yeah, um, put stress on the responsibility of the students themselves and the students were also happy with the support of the school because they ask uh, professional actors and yeah professional actors they are afraid and they also want to know if the set is corona proof because they don't want to take the risk so there was this uh, manual and um, I went on set and uh, also, there was measuring of temperature every day, and I also got a report of the Corona manager every day how the shooting went, uh, yeah, had uh, passed that day if there were uh, problems. So, um, yes, I did. Uh, so every day, the Corona manager give me like small report, and that's the way I follow up. Uh, the yeah the corona measurements uh, on set but i think it uh, went well and also for the future i think we uh, surely can go on in this way lovely thank you aminia did you have a similar yes similar um there there are two different situations the one i talked about was during lockdown so they were in their homes and they worked separately. So uh, there were no problems about security. Mm -hmm. um, but in the second phase, when we started with the other film essays, we had actual and proper sets where we adopted all the measures, as I said, we had Corona managers were the tutors, the teachers themselves, who had received a specific training about the, the measure, uh, the security measures. And so the students were conducted and helped and coordinated uh, and supervised by the tutors during all uh, during all the stages, during production, during editing at school, when they could get back to school in very short, in very small groups. Mm -hmm. um, so we, 
we work like this. Of course, uh, as in the case uh, that was presented before, uh, the pre-production phase for the films still to be shooted uh, was made with many adjustments, changes, because we had to respect stricter rules than before. Um, and this is all. Great. Thank you very much for that clarification. We are running out of time and I want to make sure we've got a two minute pause before, before the next session starts. Um, Jessica, we just had a very quick question in about in the first clip was the sound pre-recorded, if you're able to tell us. Uh, well, that, that's, uh, he's bought, well, he's in the process of negotiating the rights for the, the music that plays over the okay. scene. I presume that's what the question is. So it's a, it's a pre-recorded, obviously, a performance from a while back, but the rights, because it's a student film, are affordable, and uh, he wants this particular version, so he's dealing with people in Paris who don't call back very quickly, but that's always like this when trying to negotiate rights, sure. <laughs> but it's, it's working out fine. Thank yeah. you for answering that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to stop the session here, ready for the, for the next one to begin. Thank you so very much. Really fantastic presentations. Thank you for your honesty and, and transparency of, of how you dealt with it. Um, and it looks like some really good student work that, that came through it. So the resilience of our, our staff and students is, is always you know, overwhelming. So thank you so very much. And um, we will stop here and get ready for the next session. Take care, everyone.